Let's go ahead and log into an Office 365 account so you can see how simple and effective it is. We'll pop over to the desktop and use Internet Explorer for the desktop for this demonstration. And all I'm going to do is browse over to office.microsoft.com or you can go to www.office365.com. They kind of redirect you into the same funnel. Now, on this page, up at the top right, there's a sign-in link. I can click that. There are two ways to sign in to Office 365. You can do it using a Microsoft account, which is what I'm about to do, or you can do it with an organizational account, which is a way for organizations to keep track of and issue Office 365 licenses to employees. This is where that scenario I talked to you about earlier with using Office 365 to support contractors, being able to spin them up quickly and get them working. Those would be organizational accounts that Global Mantics is using. They're administering those and deploying those. Let's go ahead and click our Microsoft account. And because I'm signed in to Windows 8 with a Microsoft account, it will pass that through. And as soon as we come in, the first thing you see are a bunch of Office documents that I've been working on. You might be going, wow, how's it know that? Look closely. It's integrated with my SkyDrive. So it's keeping things in sync. It's looking at the files that I've been working on there and keeping them all in this list. Now, if I come down, I can go ahead and pop into the Office on Demand apps. And we'll do that in just a moment. But before then, let me pop over here and show you the My Account Management. It's pretty straightforward stuff. It's just going to tell me, hey, this is the license you have. And I have an Office 365 Home Premium license that I'm logged into right now. These are the computers that you've installed it to. This is the number of licenses that you've used and have available. You notice I've installed it on one device, my Surface Pro, and I have four installs available after that. This is because I get a total of five. And I can also look at Office for Mac deployments if I have any of those, which I don't, but they would be included in this list. And this dropdown allows me to choose what to install on the computer I'm on, for instance. So I could take it to Office for Mac, click install, download the installer, and run it. Now, if I want to reclaim a license, all I have to do is come in here and click deactivate, and it will take away that license assignment and make it available for me again. You also see that SkyDrive and Skype show as services and products that are included with my subscription and when my renewal is due. That's pretty much all there is to the My Account section. I'll go ahead and get out of this. And I will drop down to the On Demand apps and say, hey, I want to go ahead and create a new Word document. And I'll click that. And now it will think about it here for a while, depending on your internet connection. You obviously don't want to do this on a very slow internet connection because it does have to stream the app, and that can take a while. I'm going to go ahead and minimize this so that you can see that Word is opening in the background. And there we go. You'll notice it'll warn me that, hey, I'm streaming some things in the background, and until then, things may seem unresponsive. But the key here is that this is Office, right? We can create new documents. We can use templates. We can open up previous files, anything I want to do. I'll go ahead and select the blank document. There we go. Now, with that brief delay caused by my slower than normal internet connection, Word still streams and opens up, and it is the Word that you are very familiar with. It's exactly like Word 2013. If you notice in the upper right, you can see my account listed, and if I click that and drop that down, you'll notice that I get the option to jump into my account settings or switch to a different account because this is the SkyDrive that it's linked to for storage. And we're going to get more into SkyDrive in a bit. So if I come back into the document, I can go ahead and type and have it work. Now, it's important to mention once again, 
that if you're on a slow internet connection, the response is going to be degraded. But the good news is once it streams all the files and components it needs to and gets going, you won't see that repetitive slowdown and stop that you're noticing here. But this is Office 365's web app functionality. The great part about this is I don't have to have Office installed on the local PC. I can use the web app if I want to, but there's no real reason to if you have it installed locally. This is great for when you need to make a quick change to a document. For instance, Global Mantic's sales director often gets proposals for customers, and he could be at his sister-in-law's enjoying a family picnic, see the message on his smartphone that, hey, we just need a few changes made and then this sent off to the potential customer, run inside, fire up his sister-in-law's computer and log on to Office 365, fire up the web app, open up the document in Word or Excel, whichever one it came in, do the changes exactly how it's meant to be. This isn't using compatible programs. These are true Office programs and then save it off and, and send it using Outlook Web Access for Global Mantics. It really does enable the potential to do more, more often, or the concept of anywhere, anytime, anything kind of IT access. So with that, let me go ahead and close this Word app and move on with the lesson. Now that I've logged in and shown you the Office 365 Home Premium subscription, which is great for individual users at their house, I want to show you the true power where Global Mantics logs in and administers their Office 365 subscriptions. So to do that, I'll just pop into Internet Explorer and go over to the Microsoft Online Admin Portal. I'll sign in with the appropriate logon. And here you can see what I consider the power portal for Office 365. Everything that's offered and going on. Notice here's all those extra services I was speaking of earlier. Exchange, Link, the Office subscription or SharePoint. Right? And we can come in and we can view details about each of those and history of events, historical events for everything for the last week, or I can expand that out. I can also come in and administer my users and groups. And I want you to notice something here. If you look where it says synced with ACT, that's telling you that this Office 365 implementation is synchronized with Active Directory. So we have federation going on. And you can also see it here, Active Directory synchronization, because it says deactivate, that kind of <laughs> infers that it's activated. But you can also see that it was synced up just an hour ago. So when accounts are created in local Active Directory, they are synced up with Windows Azure Active Directory, which powers Office 365 exchange features and those kind of features. I can come into my licensing area and assign different subscriptions. You notice that here's one mid-sized business subscription and it's a single license, the current cost per year, and that it auto renews in March of next year. I can assign those licenses then however I want. And now if I come under, that was subscriptions, if I come under licenses, you'll see that it gives me a simplified view where it just shows me which licenses are valid, which have expired, and which have been assigned. So this is a great way to come in and say, hey, I have a valid license that isn't assigned right now, so I don't need to purchase another one. Assigning licenses is a simple process. I can come into a user and just drive down and assign which licenses I want to apply. Notice I don't have any more licenses available because my license, my Office 365 mid-size business license, has been assigned to this particular user. So I can click cancel and go back. This is the Office 365 for Business Admin Center. This is where organizations such as Global Mantics really administer and maintain their Office 365 subscriptions. Remember, 
these users have Office 2013 Professional installed on their PC. That's one of the benefits that they get from their Office 365 subscription. So it's not like they have some degraded or alternate form of the Office Suite. It is the same Office Suite that is installed for everyone else. Only the licensing and the additional features are what are different. Okay, that's enough about Office 365. Let's move on and talk about the storage system that powers all of this and many of the other cloud-based or synchronization features of Windows 8. And that is SkyDrive.